Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set some of the little helpers in the MCP Inspire set to be keyboard shortcuts. Additionally, we'll be showing you how to stop instructions that pop up once you've gotten used to using the actions and you don't want those stopping you. To start with, let's head down to the little helper section. The same method can be used to make keyboard shortcuts of any actions, but the little helpers are especially useful to have set to keyboard shortcuts so that you don't have to scroll down and find them each time. What you're going to do is you're going to want your palette expanded, which I show you in the first video. That way you have a little bit of a side area to the right where you can double click. When you double click, you'll see that it pulls up a thing that says the name of the action. So this one is MCP Snapshot, and it's set to a function key, which right now says none. So we're gonna go ahead and drop down, and we will set this to a function key. Now, you may not have this long of a list. I have a large keyboard, so I go all the way to F19, but your keyboard may only go to F12 or F15, something like that. So go ahead and pick a keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead here and click OK. And once I'm done, you will see now it says F18 right next to that action. What a snapshot does, I'm gonna go ahead and come into this picture. If I now click Shift Command and F18 at the same time, it makes a snapshot. You probably are thinking nothing happened. To see your snapshots, you need to go to your history panel and you'll see there is a snapshot there. That's snapshot one. If I wanna make a snapshot of the before, I would go to the original image and again, I can just hit F18 or I can click play on this action. They take about the same amount of time, but the reason you'd want to use a snapshot is let's say you're not at the bottom of the set and you're working on something else. You can now click that key and it will always make a snapshot no matter where you are, anywhere else in your actions palette or in Photoshop. My all-time favorite action in the little helpers section though is the group everything action. So let's say we want to set that to a shortcut. Let's come in here and F19 is not taken, but I'm so used to doing shift command for a lot of things that I'll pick that. Shift command F19 and I would click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and click shift command and F19 and you will see it grouped all of my layers into one. You're probably wondering why that would be one of my favorites. The beauty of it is that you can adjust the opacity of the entire edit all at once. So if you make an edit and you start thinking, you know, I love it, but I probably went a little over the top. A lot of us do get carried away when we edit. We can then go ahead and reduce the opacity a little bit to make it look slightly more natural. So there's my before of this and there's my after. Now that we've set our keyboard shortcuts, we'll want to make sure to resave the set. To do that, come up to the top right here. So I'm at the highest level where it says MCP Inspire and there's a little folder next to it. You will go to the right corner. There's four little lines and then you will come down where it says Save Actions and this is how you'd want to save anytime you make changes. So you'll click Save Actions and then you would go ahead and you would label it. Like right now it says MCP Inspire. And you'd go ahead and you'd label that. And then go ahead and click Save. Next up, we're going to discuss how to take out stops once you're used to using a certain action and they just kind of get in your way. To start out, we build our actions with a lot of information. We want you to be able to very quickly understand how to edit and do things. But after a while, let's say we use the light painting action and I press play and the message comes up and says that there's a mask and you can paint on it with a low opacity brush, etc. You may get tired of seeing that message every time. You'll know how to use light painting after a while. To do this, what you'll want to do is open up the little arrow next to the name. So it's the arrow that's facing right and it will expand it so you can see the steps. You'll want to look for the one that has the message that says stop and has a message. The easiest way to do this so you don't destroy the action if you ever need the action stop back 
or if you do it the wrong one by accident, is to just click the little check mark and uncheck it. So you can see now I've unchecked that stop. This, if I run through this action, you'll see it didn't give me a message. To add it back, you would just click the check mark again. The only thing you need to be careful of is that you don't delete a necessary stop. Here's an example of an action that you may want to keep these stops in so that you get accurate results. It would be the auto color switcher. If we open it, you will see there's quite a few boxes next to things. Do not turn any boxes off, you know, by using the check mark if it doesn't say stop. So you'll see right here it says color range and there's a box. You don't want to turn that off or the action will not work. Fill layer with a box, you do not want to turn that one off either or it won't work. But if you wanted to turn off this stop where it just gives directions because you now know what to do, you could go ahead and uncheck it. Wait until you're real familiar with the actions before you do this because otherwise you won't have the instructions. I hope this helped speed up your workflow by adding keyboard shortcuts and reducing the number of messages in the actions. Please visit www.mcpactions.com for more great tutorials as well as actions and presets. Thank you.